All right, great. Well, welcome everybody. This is our Tuesdays to Your Health monthly lecture webinar, experiential. Um, typically done at Kavala Point, now done in the virtual premises of multiple people's homes here. I'm Dr. Brad Jacobs. It's a pleasure to have you. And um, I'm delighted to have Suki and Russ Munsell with us this evening, and I'll introduce them sh shortly. And um, today we're going to focus on posture, movement, and resiliency, and what they call dynamic vitality. Um, I've known uh, Russ and Suki now over 10 years, I think, and um, they've done amazing work, um, both um, Suki in the area around posture and movement, as well as uh, Russ, who also is um, an established sort of veteran Tai Chi and Qigong practitioner, and also has done amazing work around swimming and sort of bringing that energy and that intention into swimming as well, uh, which has been great. So I'm really looking forward to having them this evening. We'll do this monthly, and we'll do this live um, uh, monthly uh, streaming, which is sort of a new rendition of what we've been doing here. Um, and we'll be inviting guests from time to time. Um, and I believe next month we'll have a body worker named Cliff Wong join us. So we'll tell you more about that on the backside. But without further ado, welcome uh, Dr. Suki Munsell and Russ Munsell. And I look forward to handing over to you the, the rest of the hour. Thank you. Thank you. Good. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> excuse me. Wonderful to be here with your community who uh, know the places <clears throat> Excuse me. Know exactly where to go to get the latest information. Um, I really salute you for all the work that you're doing, Dr. Brad, in so many ways, and um, we hope to we will con be contributing that to that tonight. Russell. And uh, our work, as uh, Dr. Brad has pointed to it, is uh, <clears throat> really about transforming how you move through life. So. How can you be happy and healthy in your movement through life? And in particular, how we do that is we help you to discover the patterns you already have. It's not right or wrong, just discover what you've got. And then we give you some options, some training about how it might be otherwise and offer you the opportunity to make a commitment to making some changes and repeating uh, new kinds of movement, increasing your vocabulary, if you like. So we, we know many of you are no longer rushing around, but you may be zooming around. <laughs> and we know that you are also very interested in this time in helping to build your immunity. And there's really uh, Tai Chi and Qigong and somatic therapies and somatic awareness of the body is the way to do it. So tonight, uh, did you want to say something? No. Well, I would say uh, just one thing I wanted to bring up. We've seen uh, a lot of reports from the hospitals in China. I'm working with a, uh, an oriental medical doctor and an epidemiologist. Uh, and we've seen a lot of reports from the hospitals in China and what is happening there that both the <laughs> staff and the clients, the patients, are doing Qigong and Tai Chi. And um, just as a little more kind of making it a great thing to do, uh, to let you know that uh, Harvard Medical School has been very involved and they think of Tai Chi as, uh, and Qigong as being good for everything, good to prevent and good to cure. And uh, so much so that they've actually created a book. And more recently, they just came up with a new short version of it as an introduction to Tai Chi. So I think we're in good company with Dr. Brad and Harvard Medical School, and we're delighted to be here to share some of our information with you. Mm -hmm. So in bringing this to just some basic concepts that you could think about to recenter and to drop back into your body, when perhaps you're in a, a fight or flight mode and you want to get back into the parasympathetic system, uh, rest and what I call rest and recreate. 
So the way to do that, there are four things that you can think about, and we've created an easy mnemonic, and we're going to show you those four things tonight. They're basically B, B, C, C. So B is going to be base and breath, and C will be core and connection. So I'm going to start with base. How about I start with the awareness first? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. So as you are on your seat, just sit and relax and close your eyes. The Chinese word for relax is sung, which means sunk. So allow yourself to sink onto your stool or your chair. What we're interested in doing is bringing ourselves into mindful awareness of our bodies. Notice how you are feeling. No right or wrong or good or bad, nothing you're supposed to be doing. Simply notice what's there right now. It's an opportunity to give your mind, your thinking, a little vacation, a fast. Put your mind on a fast. Don't worry about thinking about what we're doing. Notice where your body's touching the chair and the floor. And again, allowing yourself to sink. You might notice as you're breathing that in fact your entire body moves with every breath. Whole body breathing. Hearing all the sounds in your environment without needing to listen. Just allow the sound to wash over you. Experiencing, having your experience without any need to label it. Allow your awareness to be of your entire abdominal cavity from belly button to backbone, from left to right, from diaphragm down to perineum, your entire abdominal cavity. Just notice what's there, your gut feelings. And very slowly, allowing your eyes to open, sponge eyes. Very soft, passive sponge eyes, soaking up the light, seeing your entire field of vision without needing to look at anything. And welcoming whatever you're experiencing. Staying right in the chair where you are. I'm going to move back so that you can see me and perhaps see my feet. We're going to go to the last one. Mm -hmm. You should be able to see these. So we're going to work with our base. So wiggle around in your seat and perhaps put your hands under your butt and feel bones there. Those are part of your pelvis. They're called the sits bones and often considered the seat of the spine. So roll back of those and notice you come into forward flexion, a curl, <clears throat> and then come forward of those and you're going to come into an arch. Let's go back and forth a few times. So curl, Notice this is a natural exhalation and then arch. Notice it's a natural inhalation because you broaden through the shoulders. And again, 
curl and arch. Good. Now come right up onto the sits buttons. And again, back onto the sits buttons. Notice you're sitting very tall. And then forward. So onto the sits bones, since this is your base when you're sitting. Back and forward. And you can take this as an undulation. And as you do, press your feet into the ground as if you're pulling your heels towards you against the ground and pushing away. So we're connecting to base and we're actually getting grounded at the same time. So this is the B. Now come right up onto the sits bones. Often <clears throat> when we are using a computer or driving, the shoulders roll forward. Notice that is a natural collapse and you can't breathe as well. So I'm going to show you something to do there. But for now, curl even a little more. Come up onto the sits bones and arch. Press into the ground. Good. Now, if I were to take a foot away, if I were to sit on my chair this way, notice how you don't have your base anymore and you come into collapse. So when you are seated, make sure you always, you can cross your legs if you want, that's fine, but make sure you have your base under you. So again, pushing away and pulling come into an undulation of the spine. Good. Now when I come right up onto my sits bones, a curious thing happens. I try to lift a leg, join me in this, lift a leg, but you see you don't have any power. What you want to do is to go slightly back at the sits bones until you feel the psoas muscles from the lesser trochanter of the femur bone up through the pelvic cavity, attaching to the, all the way up to the diaphragm until you feel you have connection there. You're actually beginning to connect to core. Good, good. So back of the sits bones again, notice very little power. Onto the sits bones, you're tall, but you're not connected to your leg. Forward to the sits bones, open, so do that couple more times just to notice some of those changes we talked about. Okay, come right up onto the sits bones and now slightly back until you feel that engagement. Good. I'd like you to lift your arms up and stretch overhead. It feels good this time of day, doesn't it? Good. Bring a hand to the side, bring your hand down and lift up. And notice when that arm comes down, uh -huh, you can press down through your legs, grow taller through the top of your head, and you can maintain that space. And other side. Inhaling. So here's what I wanted to show you. When, you come, when the arms come down, in order to settle the shoulders into place, not forward or back, Keep your palms forward and your elbows in your peripheral vision. Settle your shoulders, then turn at the wrists. And now you can use your hands as you need to, but your shoulders are in place. So try that again. Lift up, bring your palms forward this time, down and notice that the shoulders are gonna slightly go forward. So come up again, good. And there you are. Good. All right. So we have, we're started with B, base. Mm -hmm. And the base includes where we are on our sits bones and the fact that we are connected through our feet. Mm -hmm. All right. I invite you to stand up. And one of the ways we like to work with the breathing, I'm gonna change the camera just a touch. As if 
your entire body was a balloon. So exhale like a balloon collapsing, inhale like a balloon opening up. And do that a few times. And each time make it a little different. Maybe one arm goes up and the other down. Inhale, expanding. And instead of contracting or deflating, maybe think of the idea of compressing or condensing as you come down. It's like you're storing the power. And then inhale and expand. And stop and notice how you're feeling. Now we use another way of thinking about this in Qigong. And that is if you think of your body as part of the balloon itself, not you that you are the entire balloon, but I'm part of the wall of the balloon. So now try it that way. So condense and expand. Feel the entire wall of the balloon condensing and then the entire wall expand. And again, each time, be playful. Turn a little bit one side, do different things with your hands, explore. Imagine you're a four-year-old just figuring out all the wonderful things you can do with your body. And allow your arms and hands to float. Again, noticing how you're feeling. Now the next one we want to do is called a lymphatic pump. Now many of us have heard that when we're walking or whatever, that the contractions of the muscles in our lower legs helps to pump the lymph through the body. Well, we're going to do it with the entire body. So the whole body as a lymphatic pump. So here we go again, expanding and contracting. Now this time expand and as you contract, make fists, tight fists. And release and expand. Exhale, tight fists as you contract. Expand, tight fists. Expand, tight fists, and clench your toes. Expand, fists and toes. Fists and toes. Fists and toes. And now this time, add your face. Make a prone face. Squeeze all your face into your nose. Fists, toes, and nose. Fists, toes, and nose. Fist, toes, and nose. And this time, pull up on your perineum between your anus and genitals. So fist, toes, nose, and do a kegel. Pull up on your perineum. Squeeze. Whole body expands. Whole body squeezes. One more. Squeeze and finally finish with an opening and now the arms float. Elbows are heavy, shoulders are sinking. Allow yourself to, you're gonna squat just a little bit right here. So it's not this way, it's not putting the knees out. It's like you're sliding your back as if I had my back against the wall. I slide down just a little bit. So just, it's only like a half an inch. And notice what you're feeling in your body right now. And as always, no right or wrong, nothing you're supposed to be feeling. Welcoming whatever you're feeling, you're establishing 
more biofeedback, more neural connections in your body. Now the most important breath in all of Qigong training is called the remembering breath. You know, all those times during the day when you might just have some sort of a thought about a breath. That's the moment to take one deep breath. So since we're talking about it, let's take one. Whole body breathing. Oh, we've got time. Let's take a second one. And during your day, when you remember, when you have a thought about breathing, take one or two or 10, whatever seems appropriate, but just one is enough. And now I want to do a breathing practice that's renowned in China that millions of people do every day. At least they were doing, I don't know if they're doing it in a lockdown, but if they're in, out in the parks, but they're certainly doing it at home. So as you inhale, shift onto one leg, and as you exhale, shift on the other leg. Inhale one leg, exhale the other leg. Now what we're gonna actually do is take two inhales on that leg. So inhale, inhale, and then exhale. So the first inhale fills the belly, the second inhale fills the chest, and then exhale. So let's use our hands to kind of show what we're doing. So inhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale. In Chinese, she, she, who, she, she, and do the who with us. Who, she, she, who, who, she, she, who, shoulders stay heavy, <coughs> elbows sinking. Who, she, she, a little bit faster. Who, she, she. Who, 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 a little faster yet. Who, 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 a little bit faster. Who, who. Ooh, half that speed. Ooh. 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 Half that speed. Ooh. Ooh. Half that speed. Ooh. 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 One more. Sinking, sung, sinking all your energy as if your body were a glass of muddy water and the mud was sinking to the bottom of the glass, allowing all the energy, all the feelings, all the sensations in your body to sink. And if you haven't, 
allow that sinking to happen where you slide your back down the wall just a half an inch. Sinking. Noticing how you're feeling. Welcoming your feelings. So you are sinking all the way down into your base. So let's work with base, okay, and come back up to core. So move to one side of your feet, back on the heels, other side, and forward. <clears throat> Bring your hands <clears throat> to your center of gravity, your belly. Now my center alignment is that line where gravity moves through me. I'm moving my center of gravity around my center of alignment. And turn to one side and to the other. And the other direction. This is your base. Actually, come up onto one foot and let's circle around the ankle. So this may be tricky for you or new if you haven't done it. Ankles mediate the rest of our body, our weight with the ground, other direction. So ankles need to stay flexible, other side. As you're doing this, I'll show you. If your ankles get stiff, your walk gets very stiff. Okay, and you lose your balance. So let's see which side are you doing? Okay, this way. And have we turned around the other way and take it all the way into your hip. So how about both feet now? And how about using your hands in counterbalance? What are the edges of your balance in other direction? This is your base. Good. And then come onto your feet. Good. Now come forward of your, on your feet and notice <clears throat> you feel somatically very, very forward. Come back and they describe this as kind of being back on your heels. Do you remember when we talked about the sits bones before? This would be like being forward of the sits bones. Uh -huh. This would be like being back of the sits bones. Mm -hmm. And now find the area right in front of the heel, right where the long bone of the leg would enter the ground. Put your weight there. Put it more on one side and then the other, and then come back so that they are evenly balanced. Good. Roll heel to toe, widening and spreading your forefeet. Roll to the inside, roll to the outside, and now come right down the center. So the knees, like a train, are right tracking over the feet. Good. Come to balance, equally balance. This is your base. Weight slightly forward the heels. Let's connect again from the base to the core. So uh, let's lift as if you're pulling off a shirt. Yeah, good. Now maintain that space in here, that internal girdle. So what happens in posture is there's a trade off. If you bring your belly button slightly to your backbone, now all I'm doing is just very slight, belly button to backbone, just to maybe 10 to 15% of the backs. The rest of me can relax because my core, I'm connected to core and my core is holding. Good, let's try that again. Remember the palms are gonna be forward. Good, to settle the shoulders and connect to core. Great, I don't know if you can hear, but we have a bagpipe player outside 
who has been walking the neighborhood with his bagpipe. So it's really quite lovely. A lot of nice things happening in the neighborhood. Good. Let's connect the rest of the body to core, okay? So one way to do that is to bring the arms up again, mm -hmm. belly button to backbone, and this circling is going to be the upper body around the hips, or rather keep the hips in place. And other direction. Good, and then widen the arms. If you have a strong core, you can bring your hands out full. Good. And the other direction. And you can widen your stance. <sighs> Connect to base. Connect to core. Full body breathing. Come back to center. And hands are going to come down. Or taller, taller, taller through your head. Good. So we've gone over B, B, C so far, which is base. Um, breathing. Russ gave you a lot of different ideas. Connect to core, and he has one more for you, which is connect through the whole body. So now we're interested in getting the entire body connected, and that's one of the primary goals in <clears throat> Qigong and Tai Chi training, is so that if anything's, one part moves, all parts move. So let's begin, first of all, by bending over from the waist. Slowly, only go as far as you can go, make any adjustments or modifications necessary for you. If you can go all the way to the floor and coming back up, leaving the head down till the last minute. Now, when you get to the neck, this is the time to turn your palms out and reach up with your jaw and then your hands come down and you stand i sometimes describe this as a standing bear and again inhaling reaching up energy coming up your back all the way to the top of your head and your eyebrows exhaling energy going down the front of your body all of the way to the ground Inhaling up your back, but this time leave your arms long. And when you get to your neck, turn your palms out. And then palms in. And standing. Noticing how you are. Now that we've activated the hands by opening the neck and the shoulders, we've activated all the channels and nerves in the arms. And now I'll turn sideways. I'd like you to begin to do an undulation. So as if your ankles were the handle on a whip, knees go forward, then belly goes forward, then chest, then head. And you might even think of it that you're making a circle with your chin, but allow your arms to just hang. And the other way, undulating. We're wanting the whole body to be like a snake or like a whip. Okay, and now we're going to begin working with the hands. So I'd like you to, as you begin the undulation, the hands come up and the hands go down. Hands come up. As the hands come up, the palms are facing. Hands go down, the palms are next to you. Whole body undulating. Soft, easy, no speed, no hurry, no effort, no force. If you can make it easier, make it easier. 
We're wanting to find the way that's easy. Easy is hard enough. We can learn to be easy. That's a wonderful thing to happen because that means we're getting the energy to flow in our bodies. Last one. And notice how you're feeling. Notice any sensations. In your body, notice the movement in the stillness. So we're working to get rid of any kind of stagnation in the body. And we do that with these soft, sinuous movements. The next one is we come up. It's called opening the heaven and closing the earth. And it's also done with the same kind of undulation. Whole body. And reverse it, go the other way, opening the earth and closing the heaven. Last one. And now, imagine that you're a polar bear swimming. So the undulation, and you're doing the breaststroke. Whole body undulating. and reverse it, become an eagle or a butterfly or a hummingbird, whole body undulating. You might notice that because when your arms go forward, your butt goes back, that you're balancing and you're keeping your weight at that spot that Suki mentioned just forward of your heels. So the weight isn't going back on the heels and forward on the balls of the feet. It's staying at that spot, just forward of your heels. One more. And now, one arm goes up, so this one's coming up and turning out. So there's a kind of a coiling that's happening of the arms. So the arms are coiling this way as we do the movements. So one's coiling up and out, the other's coiling in and down. And I might add a little shift of my weight as well. Shoulders stay down, elbows are always heavy. The elbows are hanging between the shoulders and the wrists. Oh, I might actually do some turning. And I see Suki is already doing shifting and turning. Turning and shifting. Once more, each side. And wrists meet in front of your heart. Hands settle down. Again, remember you're going to slide down the wall just that little quarter inch. Noticing the sensations in your body. Whole body breathing. A 
awareness of your entire abdomen. Seeing your entire field of vision. Seeing without looking. Hearing without listening. Welcoming your experience. So let's do a little bit, rub your hands, and a little bit of quick raindrops, fingertips, raindrops all over your body, head, forehead, cheeks, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, and down your back, and up your front. And now soft hands, love pats, love pats all over your head and cheeks and necks and chest and arms and down your back, and up your front, and then wiggle, jiggle, shake, whole body. How loose can you be? Shake your knees, surprise yourself about it, what you can do. Just shake and be silly. Shake your butt, shake your shoulders, shake your arms, shake your voice a little. Ah, 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 a little kicking on the ah. ah. And come back to your seated place. And eyes open or closed, however you wish. Noticing whatever you're experiencing, welcoming. Noticing the movement in the stillness. Whole body breathing. The movements might be very small and subtle, but notice that every breath your entire body moves. Awareness of your entire abdominal cavity, the home of a, a major part of your brain. You have more neurons in your belly and your guts than you do in your head. Notice your gut feelings. Feeling the surface of your skin of your entire body, including your back. In our culture, we don't pay much attention to the back. So maybe especially the back of your neck, the back of your waist, the back of your knees. Noticing all the sounds in your environment. Hearing without listening. Kind of animal senses. And seeing your entire field of vision without needing to look at anything. Welcoming whatever you're experiencing. And you know, when a really good friend shows up at your front door and you feel that sense, you might be smiling in your face, but you feel that sense of smile and welcome throughout your body, allow yourself to welcome whatever you're experiencing with a whole body smile.
<clears throat> thank you. Yeah, me thank too. you. We, we hope you've enjoyed this. Brad's going to come back on, but just before he does, I wanted to share with you. If you would like more, then join us through dynamicvitality.com. Let me make that larger. This is our website. And for now, we have free online classes in Dynamic Tai Chi and Qigong and Body Mindfulness. So dynamicvitality.com, it's a way that you can join us a few times a week. Uh, let us come right into your living room. You come into our studio. It's been wonderful. We've, we've, people have taken it because they're home and they're not zooming around or running around here or there. They've taken it so deeply and gotten wonderful, wonderful results. And we hope you will too. Okay, take that. Oh, oh. I didn't want to do that. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much, Russ and Suki. That was wonderful. Um, you know, one of the beautiful things that I even myself have been so focused in on caring for my patients and COVID-19 and trying to read all the information around this and there's just so much happening and that we sort of lose sight of our own um, sense of uh, orientation and what we do for our own habits to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We get so, you know, focused on everyone else's health and well-being and I as a physician, but also a father and also a husband and also, you know, and a son and all the different roles we all play in the world. Um, and uh, it's beautiful to really have to spend a little bit of time reconnecting with our body. Um, so thank you for that. It's quite, it's really a gift. Thank you. Um, and, you know, one of the things I want to, I guess, ask you about, and by the way, I welcome any, any and all questions. If you want to send them through the Q and A, you're welcome to, please do. Um, and one person just sent their blessings and gratitude to you. Um, is I'm curious about how you've, you guys have managed in this time and, and kept your routine going and your own personal, you know, contemplative practice or movement practice. Maybe you can share a little bit of your insights and wisdom. Oh, it has been quite an amazing time. I, um, as you noticed, we didn't have a swimming class among the lists. The swimming pool is closed. And I swim every day. I love it. And I really miss it. And the other thing I really miss in this time is hugs. So just to acknowledge that there's some things, I mean, I get, I get some hugs, but they're all the hugs with all of you and all of the people that I meet all the time. Uh, I miss that. In the meantime, doing practice every day, teaching classes and watching students mm -hmm. because they haven't uh, rushed to class from someplace else or they don't have someplace else to rush to, feels like people are allowing themselves to drop into their bodies more deeply than they do usually. And that's the kind of reports we've been getting from the students as well. So it's been a very gratifying time. Um, and I would add to that that Russell has been really quite wonderful and taken the leadership in our relationship in terms of um, hygienic practices like regular times of eating and regular times of sleeping and um, about a 12 to 14 hour fast overnight every day. Uh, all of those things has been extraordinarily beneficial. Um, neti pots and um, as he said, the, the classes, movement classes and walks. So I'm working uh, Brad, I'm working on an online, the dynamic walking program that I've been developing and teaching uh, for oh, over three decades. That's going online. So I've been spending a lot of time um, luxuriating in putting that together in a way that we can either uh, have that available to people to do on their own at their own pacing or meet me on Zoom and um, we take walks every night, often after dinner. Uh, it's really healthy for our bodies. And uh, so that's, that's what I've been doing. Well, Suki actually pointed the way at my, my, the goddess of my life for mm -hmm. the last close to 50 years of working in 
uh, health promotion and wellness education programs is the Greek goddess Hygieia. And um, there are lots of stories around her family, her, her family. She was, she was the daughter of Asclepius and, and all of that. But her whole thing was hygiene. So I think that this is an, a wonderful opportunity during this shutdown to really think about our hygienic practices. And I don't mean just washing our hands and wearing a mask. I mean, what do we put in here? What do we eat? Uh, do we get adequate exercise and pro it, uh, appropriate sleep and all those sorts of things? So uh, if I can put Hygieia on your altar as well, mm -hmm. uh, I offer her to you. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. I really, I, I love the um, sort of reconceptualization of hygiene, uh, really about cleansing, purifying, clearing, yes. uh, the way you address it. That's beautiful. All about lifestyle. Yeah. And so there's a question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think this has thrown people back onto themselves or into themselves for their own uh, to take care of themselves at a deeper level. We realize that we're living in an age of superbugs where we are our own first line of defense. And we need to use all of our resources to do that. Yes. Yeah, and we know in this time and era, then as did Dr. David Katz has talked about, who's formerly at Yale, um, he speaks to the fact that um, you know, when we have these chronic health issues, um, we're much more likely to get sicker um, from COVID. And, uh, you know, no one likes to think about it, talk about it, because it's chronic and things don't happen for a long time. But this is expedited, you know, exponentially uh, quickening the re immediate re result if you don't have a healthy lifestyle. So for better or worse, it's true. So one of the questions I just gave, we only have a few minutes left, I want to ask you, about is um, from the audience is I've been hearing about healing breath sounds in Qigong and can you please advise can you please you know give us some more I guess she's looking for insight around these breath sounds related to Qigong practice you know much about that oh uh, yes and that was one of the things I considered doing tonight uh, and let me give you the very, very short version um, because I, we won't get through all of the sounds, but there are sounds for each of the organs and there are, there are essentially four things that we do for each organ, one of which is a sound. But you can begin now, let's say you start with the liver, which is under the ribs on the right side. So you can kind of massage it. But the other thing you can do is you can stretch that. And the other thing you can do is you can squeeze the liver. So stretching, squeezing, massaging. And twisting. And twisting. By the way, are they going to get a uh, recording or is a recording of this going to be up? Yeah, we will post a recording of this. So I'll give you the sound since we, uh, and we'll just do it very quickly. Won't so the sound for the liver is SH. So every time you squeeze, it's So for the heart, massage and stretching the chest and squeezing the chest and massaging. And the sound is hooey, H-U-E, hooey. For the spleen, under the ribs on the left side was the spleen and pancreas. I won't go into all the details, but we'd be here for a while. So spleen, the sound is who, like a, an owl. So all the same things, massage, stretch, squeeze, and who, who, who. For the, the uh, lungs, the same three things, massage, stretch, squeeze. She, ah, uh, so it's she, like, like she, she, ah, uh, she, ah, uh, she, ah. Uh, so I keep stretching and squeezing, but on the screen, I exhale. She, ah. Uh. 
And for the kidneys in the back, I'll turn and stand up a little bit so I can stretch my back this way and I can squeeze by coming back. And the sound is shrewe, C-H-R-U-E. Shrewe. You notice when you bend over, you pull the muscles, the back strap muscles over the kidneys and give them some pressure. And put your attention where you're, where you're focusing. So that's the super short version. There are several different versions of it. Uh, that's the shortest and easiest that I'm aware of. So thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah. This, by the way, this would be very good because what this does is it helps to harmonize all of the organs. And then the kind of uh, self-massage that we we're doing and rubbing the body all over, that's very good because it helps to discharge any stagnation. So these are the good things to be doing at this time. And uh, another question is, what was the, what's the frequency that you recommend people do this and how long? Well, every time you think of it, and as long as feels right. There's no right, I mean, if you go to a different school or a different book, they'll say, well, do it this many times or for this long. Just do what feels right to you and begin. Our whole way of teaching is not a right or wrong or good or bad. <laughs> Um, did we just bounce out of that? No, you're good. Okay. Um, our way of teaching is exploratory. So explore and play and experiment and see what it feels like to you to, to try doing these things. And do it five times. Do it ten times. Some things say do them 18 times. Who cares? It's not important. What's important is it's giving you some kind of a feeling. Got it. Yeah, and I think my only additional comment to that would be do it every day if you can. You know, do a little bit every day. It doesn't mean, you know, if you forget, don't feel bad about it. But if these things are such beautiful cleansing practices that if you do five minutes a day, you know, you do a little bit every day, um, they really have this huge cum cumulative effect. Here's what, I, here's what I say about exercise. Imagine your body sitting at the door like a puppy with a leash in its mouth, ready for you to take a walk or to exercise it. So if you ask your mind, your mind has plenty of other things to do. But if you ask your body, your body goes, yes, I could use that right now. So the more you empower your body to make those kinds of decisions about your body, the happier you'll be. I would say one more thing about that, and that is, imagine it's 20 years from now, and what will you be looking back and thanking yourself for doing? And when I do my practice every day, it's like, I have a sense that in 20 years from now, when I'm getting close to 100, I'm in my late 90s, that I'll be going, I'm really happy I kept kept up my daily practice. Some days it's only a uh, half hour, 45 minutes. Some days it's longer. Some days it's 20 minutes. And there's an occasional day that I, I just don't feel like it and don't do it. And I respect my body. My little puppy is not at the door wanting to go for it. <laughs> it's just kind of going, nah, enough for, enough for today. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, Suki and Russ, thank you both for your time, your attention, your, your, your decades of, uh, of experience and sharing it with us. Um, I really, we really appreciate that very much. So I hope to have you back. Please go onto their website. And if you're interested and learn more and enroll in their online free classes, that's really generous of you both. Thank you. Uh, and next, next month, we'll plan to, again, uh, bring on a guest, Cliff Wong, who is uh, a body worker who does a lot of fascia level work and uses actually car buffers that weigh 14 pounds on the body, uh, as well as many other sort of tools. And it's pretty interesting uh, work and it does amazing uh, releases at, 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 in joints and fascia level. Uh, it's pretty, uh, quite impressive. So um, welcome you guys to, to join back for that. And thank everyone for their time. And thank you again.
Russ and Suki for your time. Thank you. Great. Be in touch. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now.